is when I came back to Mexico, the devil was so angry for what happened in Auschwitz that he literally appeared to me in my room to try to kill me. And there, I, 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 well, I, I had a very strong relationship with the sacrifice of Yeshua and, and a relationship with the blood of Yeshua in my spirit. And when this happened, the Holy Spirit said to me, just manifest the power of the blood. And I literally saw my body in the spirit, how light came out of my, of the blood of Jesus that is inside of me and totally destroyed the power of darkness, the devil that was in front of me. Well, he, he asked me to stand up and he begins to speak a word of prophecy over me. He says, uh, Jonathan, the Lord's going to give you the gift of discerning of spirits. He's called you as a seer, which I didn't know what that was at the time. And he said, you're going to begin to discern spirits more than you ever wanted to, which at that point I had never wanted to. Of so course. anything would have been impressive. <laughs> yeah. So uh, instantly I had this, this impartation where I received this prophetic word and it, it started to happen. I started to see things. What in was the, the first thing you remember seeing? I remember seeing uh, a bookshelf that was in my house and seeing fire on it. And as I went over to it, the Lord told me uh, there were specific books on there that I needed to read. And so I began to pull them down and they were from different leaders that uh, taught on the prophetic, taught on discerning mm -hmm. spirits. And the Lord was guiding me into uh, the books that I needed to grow and learn in this gift at that time. Overwhelmed. I was seeing stuff all the time. And uh, I'd walk down the street and I'd see uh, serpents wrapped around certain buildings or demonic beings on top of certain buildings. But you um, probably, you were seeing things and probably didn't really understand what you were seeing. I, as much as I could, I stayed home. I was so overwhelmed. I, I, were you afraid? I was not enjoying this experience, definitely. Hmm. Yes, it was quite, it was quite overwhelming, quite scary. Um, and and uh, if I went to a store, I'd see objects stuck in people at times, swords, spears, arrows, and I didn't understand what I was seeing. So uh, I kept reading, asking the Lord, what, what is it that I'm encountering here? I'd go to services where there was worship going on, and if the worship got cut off, like if the speaker comes up to share, and the worship got cut off at a time when it shouldn't have, I would see angels crying. Really? I, you know, that happens a lot. I does. mean, I haven't seen the angels cry, but yeah. it, it, I know when the things are, uh, you know, it just, it's just we got too much to do. Definitely, definitely. And, and so... Uh, uh, could you tell by just walking down the street if someone was a believer or not? Yes, that was one of the most clear things, is that there would be a radiant light that shined uh, behind a believer, it was like it shined out in all directions. Hmm. And you could tell who a believer was because they carried the glory of God. And you could tell uh, who a non-believer was because there was like a veil of darkness around them. It says in Corinthians that the, the God of this age has veiled the eyes of the unbeliever. There's literally a veil that surrounds an unbeliever. And so when I look at, at an individual on the street, um, if they're a believer who is being oppressed by depression or sickness, uh, sometimes I'd see a cloud of darkness around them that was oppressing the light shining out of them. And sometimes uh, I'd see body parts hanging in the air, and the Lord would say they need that body part put into them. But uh, one of the key verses was Proverbs 12:18. It says that reckless words pierce like a sword. Hmm. And so, uh, and the tongue of the wise brings healing. So I said, Lord, give me the tongue of the wise. I had this lady come and she sat down in a chair at one of my meetings where I was praying for healing. And uh, she looked like a pin cushion. She had spears in the spirit uh, that were sticking out in every direction, about eight to 10 feet. And on each spear, it had a word. It had fear, it had rejection, unforgiveness, bitterness. And I, as I got close to her, I said, as I always do, can I lay hands on you to pray? And this is the first and only time she said, uh, no, please don't, uh, because it physically hurt if you touched her. And I said, well, uh, can I tell you what I'm seeing? And I described it to her. And she said, well, that makes sense because I'm on all these medications for fibromyalgia, uh, chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr virus, and uh, social anxiety disorders as well. 
So when someone gets within the eight to ten feet range of her, her body, she feels it. She feels and, and it you stir could, up. So it, it's almost like you were seeing in the spirit what was reflecting in the physical. Exactly. That's the best way to say it. And so I, I said, well, honey, let me pray for you and let's, uh, let's remove these fears. And so we began to pray through prayers of forgiveness and releasing those people who had hurt her. And uh, we prayed for about an hour and a half. By the time we were done, she got up, gave me a great big hug, and uh, she's been uh, confirmed now from the doctors as well, being completely healed. Now, now, why did you do this praying? Why couldn't you just reach over and just pull each spear out? Well, that's a great question, because some people have done that, but it, the wound is still there. If you pull out the object, but you haven't dealt with the wound it caused, then person is just in the spirit they're just bleeding and wounded and you went to Brazil and I can just picture this well I'm standing uh, near the front row and I see two 15-foot angels on the stage like I'd never seen before they were actually surrounded by fire that came out of them about six feet so they're 15 feet tall they have six feet of fire around them and I'm not thinking, oh, this is wonderful. I'm thinking, I'm scared out of my mind. I need to get away from this. But in that moment where I'm thinking to run, I see the angel closest to me uh, start walking towards me. He puts his hand out and he touches my chest and I hit the floor, curled up in a ball. I feel this fire cover my body. I'm laying there uh, making a pool of sweat. I have my nice clothes on. I'm in Brazil on a cement dusty floor and I'm, I'm covered with fire in the spirit and I begin to see things in the audience. Like what? Well, I saw smaller fire angels the size of a person with fire about uh, a foot coming out of them. They were joining in with the worship and the worship, the crowd looked like it was on fire. And uh, I got a call that there was a lady who's uh, 83 who was dying of stage 4 ovarian cancer and uh, they asked if I would come and pray and so I drove out to where she was uh, she she had just started her second round of chemotherapy she had had her ovary removed and they said they closed her back up and said we got 90 percent of it but the other 10 we can't operate on you have four months to live just go home do the chemo, but it's, it's not going to help. You're, you're too old. And uh, I talked to her and said, you know, the Lord will take you home, but he wants to take you home with dignity. He doesn't want to take you home with cancer. That's not how the Lord works when he takes people home. And so we agreed together, and there were some, some objects in the spirit that we prayed through, some forgiveness prayers and some uh, prayers about fear for her grandkids. And so we prayed those through for about an hour. And uh, we didn't see anything tremendous happen at that moment, but I got a call two weeks later. She went into her doctor two weeks later. He came in with a chart and he said, I don't know quite how to tell you this, but you're 100% cancer free. Mm. Mel Bond has a gift called discernment where he can see evil spirits on people, command the evil spirit to leave, and then they get better. I love that gift. When did this start happening in your life? That happened, uh, it began with, in sep no, 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 uh, October 1973, and uh, Jesus, in a vision, uh, said, Mel, I want to take you someplace. And he took me to this, like a large cave, and it looked like it was probably a half a mile wide, and I couldn't see the end of it. It was so, and it was just filled with uh, horrible, hideous demons making all kinds of hideous noises. And without God's help, if anybody from a natural standpoint was there, it would, it would destroy them. They would die of horror just hearing or just seeing, either one. And so... I, I've talked to people that have had experiences mm -hmm. like that, and uh, unless you had God with you, Absolutely. I totally understand. That's right. And so one particular demon came up to me. Uh, and he was probably about seven foot tall, and, and he had fingers that were like eight or ten inches long, and then he had fingernails probably three to four inches long that curved, and he was trying to slash and, and tear me apart and slash, and he was only getting just just a fraction of an inch from my face, and it was, such, it was very ho horrifying, 
And at that time, I looked up at Jesus, and he was at my right-hand side, and he had a hold of my right hand, and he squeezed it. And I looked up at him, because he's a little bit taller than I am, and he says, Mel, the rest of your life, you're going to go down corridors like this. But he says, always know, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I'll be with you, and that uh, you have power in my name. And from that time on, it, it, it just an uh, unprecedented amount of encounters have I encountered. But the thing that's so exciting to me is after that encounter with the Lord, all of his senses spiritually were activated. And when you teach on this, mm -hmm. Uh, what happens to the people that listen to the teaching? Well, I've done conferences, ministers conferences all over the world uh, with the gifts of the Spirit and the gift of discerning of spirits that I would very con extremely conservatively say that 80% of all people that are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, they speak in tongues, immediately they begin to see in the Spirit. Speaking of seeing in the Spirit, in the late 70s, two demons came into your bedroom. Tell me about that. Yeah, in the late 70s, I was awakened in the middle of the night because I heard some footsteps in, in my house. And they, were, they started walking down the hallway, and they walked into the bedroom. And um, uh, immediately, that I jumped up and started swinging at them with my fist because to, you know, to protect my household. And they just began to laugh. And then immediately, of course, I, it was pretty obvious that these were spirits even though that it was in living color and uh, they looked like they were physical. And uh, so immediately faster than machine gun bullets, the, the Lord spoke to me and he says, Mel, this person that you've been praying for that has a problem with adultery, has a problem with alcohol, that, uh, and I've been working with them for a long time trying to share the scriptures and things weren't getting any better. He says, this is the root of the problem. The one on the right is a spirit of adultery. The one on the left is a, is a spirit of alcohol. Deal with the, the root of the problem, not the person. And I did in every sense that is broken off of those, that person. That's such a wonderful gift to have. Tell me about the woman uh, th that uh, you saw a demon on her throat. Okay, this happened down in Taylor, Texas. I was a pastor of uh, a church, Assembly of God Church in, in, in Taylor, Texas, 707 Lizzie Street. And, um, and I, it was either the first or second service, so I didn't know the people. My wife and I had just started pastoring there, so we didn't know the people. And while I was preaching, that I looked and I seen this lady uh, probably about 85 years of age, and on her left shoulder, right in this area here, I seen, and, and I could talk about it for a long time, but basically it was a, a demonic force, and it had arms and legs that stretched all over into her neck region and her body like this. And so I just stopped preaching, and I says, I'm going to take care of the situation in your life right now, and I commanded that force to leave that was in that particular area on her body, and I watched that spirit. It dropped off and it crawled out the back door and then out the, the door and down the street to the left. By the time that it got to the back door, all of a sudden this lady started raising her voice, sort of a, not a real loud shout, but shouting and, and, and saying, praise God, hallelujah, and that sort of thing. And all the church started getting real excited. And I'm thinking, well, I don't think this is such a big deal. Why is everybody so excited? And then when things calmed down, the lady spoke and she says, I had a stroke six months ago and I've not been able to talk for six months and this portion of my body had been affected and all of that was totally gone. So